There we go. I'm now here. I, I have the honor of interviewing two of my favorite artists in the world today, the fantastic Johanna Sadonis and Nikki Anderson from Lucifer. How are you guys? Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Good. Nice to talk to you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm very glad to be chatting with you because I've been following your career for, for, for years now. And I'm so glad that for, for the last few years, you, you joined forces and you uh, releasing fantastic albums. Uh, and now you just released Lucifer 4, which is, I can say that it's one of the best albums of the year, even the, if the year is not over yet, but it's a fantastic album. Thank you for yeah. the music. Well, thank you then. <laughs> thank you for digging it. Yeah, you have a very uh, big problem with that album, I suppose, because it's the, the process of choosing the singles. Because, how do you do it? Because every song is it's fantastic. How do you choose the singles for, that will be promoting the album? Well, I think uh, first we talk amongst ourselves and then we ask a few people we trust and just to see what they think. Yeah, it kind of starts with, what do you think, Nick? What do I think? We write down, you know, what could be, what's like the three best songs and what is the three worst songs? <laughs> and um, we ask in the band and then we reach out to a few trustworthy friends, you know, like Fred from Dismember, Henry from Electric Assault Records, who is always our US tour manager, for example. Uh, just like people that are close to us, that are peers, that play music themselves, what they think, in their opinion, is the three best songs. And this time I made like a, <clears throat> a chart, you know, and I wrote down which song got the most, uh, this should be a singer. So, so we went by that. <laughs> and it's great. And I, I, I'm sorry to ask you this question, but I suppose you've been uh, telling people thousands of times, every single interview probably ask you this question, but how do you two first met? Uh, well, when we really met, uh, that was in Berlin, and we started talking about Blue Oyster Cult, and we kept talking for eight hours, and I think that's... <laughs> well, we actually never it, really stopped talking after yeah. that. <laughs> no, so th that's the very condensed short version yeah. of it. Yeah. We met before casually, you know, but um, when the sparks were flying that night, that was in 2016 uh, in Berlin after an Imperial Set Electric show. And do you remember when you first had any contact with Nikki's music, uh, Johanna? And, and I'll ask you the same question about uh, Johanna to Nick. If it was with the oath or, or for Johanna, was it with helicopters or how no, did you first hear of each other? It was entombed when I was a teenager because, um, yeah, I, I, when I was 15, 16, I got really into black and death and doom metal. And of course, entombed, you know, was, was one of the bands that my friends and me would listen to as well, you know, because it's one of the classics. I, I discovered the oath in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, uh, Entombed was uh, certainly a, a very important band for that specific genre. But after that, you 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 never had any prejudice against against any sort of music, I suppose, because you you did all many different kinds of music throughout your career, Nick. And uh, I'm, I'm prejudiced too. <laughs> well, I mean, we all do against some some kind of music, but not the good ones. <laughs> But how how difficult was it for you? Because I'm I'm from the you know I started listening to music in the eighties. Uh, I'm all uh, kind of the same age as you, so we probably started same age. And when we started listening to music, it was very uh, s separated. You know, you could only listen to death metal or thrash metal, or even in metal, it was kind of a of separated. There was a separation. How was oh, it yeah. for you to try uh, to be able to to go from death metal to soul music with a solution. I, I, I love it. And how do you start listening to opening your mind to all different kinds of music? Uh, I think even when I was the, the very most uh, in deep into death metal, I still listen to Ramones and Kiss. Uh, but I agree when it came to the metal part, I mean, there was even a time Maybe not, the, it was a 
pretty short period, but I thought people who, who liked thrash metal were idiots because it was death metal or nothing. <laughs> but then I also listened to like, yeah, Kiss, Ramones and Sex Pistols and, and other stuff that I grew up with. Uh, that didn't last so long, probably. I, I think, but it's also a little bit, and there's the same thing with Lucifer, uh, although not as much. We do have a frame uh, within, you know, where we work within, you know, and, and even if it's a lot broader than, say, when death metal, you know, it's still stuff we we wouldn't even talk about doing. There would never be a reggae part in the Lucifer song, but we don't even have to discuss that, you know. But I think we do cover a lot of different yeah. genres because there's so many different influences and we have covered songs from a variety, like a broad spectrum. You know, I mean, we even covered a Tom Waits song, you know, and uh, going, yeah, I mean. Yeah, but that's because it's good. Yeah, but yeah. there's anything from, you know, Angel Witch, we covered Loser, Loser for the first Lucifer album um, for the Japanese edition. And, and there's so many, you know, we covered Motorhead and there's so many different bands um and now a northern soul song also you know when we did that uh single where Eileen from blues Bliss was singing i mean that was a 60s northern soul song so that's uh and that combined with all the different influences you know i mean you e even have some death metal riffs in there <laughs> well yeah i mean it's the same things i mean black sabbath is the one thing that connects that the most, yeah. I guess. But yeah. I, th I think, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a music fan and I lo love music. So of course I'm looking for music that I really like. And that happens to be, I mean, I like Wilson Pickett as much as I like Autopsy. It's the same thing for me. And, and Johanna, how easy is it for you to, or, or difficult sometimes, is it for you to work with someone that the great drummer, guitar player, bass player, songwriter, uh, designer for of, of artwork. Is it is it does it make it easier for you or or producer as well? Or or is it difficult sometimes to manage so many talents in, in just one guy? Come on, you. <laughs> no man, I have to say you, you're everybody talks about Dave Grohl being the you know drummer and now singer songwriter, but you you're even left-handed, man. <laughs> well it's great I, I only see positive sides to it because um we share a lot of the same um tastes and everything you know visually musically sonically you know how graphics are supposed to look um you know i mean with lucifer um, um it makes it very easy you know we produce together we design together we write everything together um so I'm, I feel very blessed that I, you know, get to do this with Nika. It's awesome. Oh, and the same goes for me, because we, it's like Johanna said, we do share a lot of the uh, same preferences with things. And so a lot of times we don't even have to discuss because it's obvious to us, you know, it's like, of course. And, and about the writing and, and production process of Lucifer 4. Do you guys, uh, are you guys that kind of, those kind of artists that uh, have inspiration 4 a.m. in the morning and need to rush to, to start playing a, a song or you get in the studio and then you decide to start uh, writing songs? Do you have a discipline or are you more, uh, that can happen anytime? What kind of uh, writers are you or producers? I think, I think for me, it was more like he said, like you said, that anytime, but now since you're older, I mean, we're both parents and then you have to structure it a little bit. Well, yeah. the ideas always come. So yeah. when there's an idea at four in the morning, you know, I write it down, like I have an idea for a lyric or for a melody, I re voice record it on my phone or, um, you know, I make notes for lyrics and stuff. And then later on you sit down, you know, when you have the time for it. Which is, which is not often enough. Yeah, exactly. Because we are kind of plagued by, because we do everything ourselves and we are such, 
you know, like we have our vision so clear that uh, we are also kind of control freaks who do everything ourselves. I would say we are both yeah. extreme control freaks. <laughs> so you would have like a record company, oh, but we can do that. And then we go, nah. We do it ourselves. Yeah, we do it ourselves. But <laughs> the problem with that is that it plagues us as in not having enough time or as much time as we would like to have for the creative process because everything else takes up a lot of time too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but you know, it's never, um, I, I think for the writing process to, to answer your question, um, it's not like we meet in the studio and okay, now we write something no. together. It's always everybody works for themselves. Nico works for himself. I work for myself. And now that Linus and Martin also contributed to the new album, they also work for themselves. So we never jam together. It's always like, you know, I take something and do something and then give it back to him or the other way around, you know. We work in separate rooms even, you know sending each other music files <laughs> On, uh, via email people. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and did the pandemic uh, really affect your work or or made it easier at least for the uh, on the recording and produ producing part of it like uh, of course the concerts and tours are uh, had to stop but on on the writing process uh, since you live together and and you have your own studio nick did it affect it uh, heavily or or in a way helped the creating process I think the only thing that changed with the pandemic for us was that we had uh, more time, but it was pretty similar. I think it, um, the time is luxury for us. So that was the silver lining of the pandemic, you know, that we, it wasn't interrupted by touring and traveling because before the pandemic started, we were traveling a lot and not only for Lucifer, but for the helicopters and the other bands. Um, and uh, we probably wouldn't have put down an album as fast as we did now if we would have been, you know, with our regular touring schedule. So in that sense, um, it, it was um, good for Lucifer 4 that we had the time to also rehearse the songs before recording them, because we didn't do that on uh, Lucifer 3. Uh, not on 2. Not on 2 either, yeah. You know, we just went straight to the studio to record. And a thing, the thing is that a song sometimes needs time to breathe and you have to kind of figure out maybe, you know, if, if you rehearse it a few times um, and it starts to gel more within the band, then you also figure out, huh, maybe the original speed on the demo is too slow for the song. We have that with some songs that um, we recorded before for our previous Lucifer albums that we haven't rehearsed as a band before. We just like recorded them straight away like Phoenix, for example, when we listen to this now, it's like, oh, this is way too slow. This should have been recorded faster because when we play it live, it's faster too. But you don't know that, you know? And, and now we have the luxury to, you know, rehearse the songs. Like, I think we always took three songs at a time to rehearse them. And then yeah. we went to the studio to record. And um, you, you're, I suppose you're in Berlin now, right? No, no. we're in Sweden. We live in, in Stockholm. You're in Stockholm. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but I mean, you, you're from different countries and, and particularly about Sweden. I'm always curious to know why there are so many great bands from Sweden, because, you know, 40 years ago, I, th I suppose there was only ABBA. And, and now, I mean, at least my own, my, my favorite bands are from Sweden, you know, Helicopters or, or, or uh, Horizon or, or Graveyard. There's so many great bands. What is so special about the water that you drink there? that creates so many bands. I don't know if you agree with me, Johanna. I know there are great bands in Germany. Cadaver, for example, is one that I recently saw live. But in Sweden, it's amazing. It's not a, it's not a huge country and, and there's so many great heavy metal bands or hard rock bands. I mean, I have gotten that question a lot, but I think uh, one of the reasons is that somehow, uh, well, first of all, Sweden has been really good uh, for a long time to embrace American pop culture, uh, even going back to jazz music in, in the 50s. We were kind of early with that, I think. Uh, but also somehow the uh, infrastructure when it comes to, to um, I, I just think it's easier to get a rehearsal place in Sweden than in Germany, for example. So it's small things like that. 
it's just i think it's a culture that feeds off itself um me when i moved to sweden uh three four years ago um <clears throat> almost everybody that i know plays in a band and they play not only in one band they play in their friends band as well and then they keep swapping it's very incestuous it's, it's, it's incestuous totally <laughs> and I, but i think that maybe spawned some sort of um not competitiveness because everybody's friends but it's kind of you know oh he's doing it so he's doing it it's like i don't know i think it gets passed on um yeah maybe somehow and um it seems like maybe it's it's easier for for kids to start playing here because of getting rehearsal I rooms think it's a little and, bit like yeah that. yeah uh, and uh you have a, a, a large, I see a large and beautiful record collection be, behind you. Is what is the range of, of artists that are there? You, you, I mean, who are your who are your music heroes? Many. Yeah, anything from Madonna to autopsy. <laughs> <laughs> we have everything anything. I mean, there's you'll find you know punk, so um, new wave of British heavy metal, death metal doom i don't know like all kinds of the country you know but most of it is um most of it has electric guitar yeah and most of it is classic like you won't find a modern death metal band in there it's usually you know like a cool old school death metal band or cool 60s country or we don't have so much prog either I think. no no <laughs> reggae no prog uh <laughs> no no genesis records and oh yes um, no yes records no, no. i i only no. have the first rush album uh oh, i have uh three rush albums so we have prog <laughs> well rush doesn't rush doesn't count the rush is a, a... They, they do count because people told me in the early 90s that oh you play drums you must love rush <laughs> i don't know i've never heard it I'll uh, go buy Rush. So I went and bought uh, three Rush albums. And I, yeah, one I liked a little bit better, but that didn't, that was the first one that didn't, that wasn't so proggy. No, that one rocks. Yeah. That one is cool. And I also think Fly By Night, that was the second one, I think. That's, Other one I have too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, enough about Rush. <laughs> so this is, this is uh, both record collections put together? Yeah. Yes. I mean, we're married. Come on, you know. Oh, I know, I know, but uh, you never know. You know, <laughs> you know, sleep in the same bed and eat out, out of the same fridge. <laughs> Nikki, do you know how many albums have uh, you ever you recorded in your career? No. <laughs> I'm and not I, so good at keeping track of things. Uh, I mean, it's like in in the helicopters you have Robert, the drummer, who is really good at archiving stuff, and so are you. And yeah. I've been never been good at that. So I don't even own all the albums I've been on. Because sometimes I forget and I give someone an album away and then I don't have it anymore. And yeah. I have I have to make a confession here and I never seen a helicopter show and I was really, really excited last time you played in, in Sao Paulo because I had tickets for it for the show and but it was right in the beginning of pan the pandemic. I think it was February 2020. Yeah. And and I was kind of, I didn't go. I'm sorry, man. I didn't go. I felt I feel really sorry for not going, and I regret it. But I didn't know what was going to happen, so I was kind of scared. I'm sure you get your chance again. Oh, and Lucifer, yeah. have you been to Brazil, Johanna? No, not yet. Oh, you went with us, but not as Lucifer. Not as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, I, were I, you here last time? They were. They played here. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Uh, it was great. It was my first time in South America, and I, I hope that Lucifer can come back. Don't tell so me, I, don't tell me you jammed because then it would be too much for me. On no, that show. But, <laughs> no, no. I was just Yoko Ono. I was just having a good time with a drink in my hand. Just breaking up. up the band. Just helping to break up the band. <laughs> Nah. That's so mean. No, no, no I'm, I'm not. I love Yoko Ono. I love Yoko Ono. I love John Lennon and, and especially his solo career. I, I love her. I, also don't think I think that I, she didn't break up. I don't the think she broke up the Beatles. No, I no, not at all. She saved him from a lot of things. And actually, he was more of an asshole than a lot of people think. It's very often that the women get kind of demonized, you know, and yeah. that's what the Lucifer 4 cover is all about. 
that well, he's saying he's that saying that a song called "Woman Is the Nigger of the World." Exactly, is likely to to talk about that. Are you yeah. are you guys a Beatles fan? Because I the one one of the songs in the album has like uh, reminded me a little bit of the of the chord uh, progression of of "I Want You." She's so heavy. I think it's uh, the uh, Phobos. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. I don't know no. if it's an inspiration or not, but are you guys a Beatles fan? I think if yeah. you if you play any kind of rock music, any kind, and not to acknowledge Beatles for what they did, yeah, then I mean, I think without even people who don't think they are Beatles fans, I think they are, like subconsciously. <laughs> I mean, they they were so groundbreaking in everything they did. And uh, yeah, I, I'm a huge Beatles fan, and and so were Black Sabbath, and you can totally hear that too. I think. I agree. Um, I, I'm a Beatles fan too. Though, if you had had a gun to my head and you asked me Beatles or Stones, then I would say Stones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, what I would have said earlier. Yeah. And then I, I reevaluated. Well, there's a thing though. I, I think songwriting. Wise, maybe the Beatles is even more, I don't know, elaborate in a way. But I, I just love the rock and roll of the Stones. There's something about it. Yeah, the Beatles don't have that. That's what the Stones have. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just, and, and that's more like an emotional, um, perceiving it in a more emotional way. You know, what I associate with being a Stones girl, you know. Yeah, maybe I, the Beatles had that in the early days in the when you listen to the Hamburg recordings in, uh, or the first BBC sessions and stuff, they were really rocking hard, but then they Yeah, changed. they were. But I think both bands, um, I mean, I'm a huge, like with the Stones, um, I love everything that they did, but I love the most the 70s stuff. So, and they have something so dirty and rock and roll there that I don't feel so much in the Beatles. Course, yeah, but absolutely. But do you think that, uh, I mean, I'm also a huge fan of, of the 60s and 70s uh, and, and 70s. I think there's nothing that can beat the 70s in terms of, of music quality. Do you think there's we can ever have that kind of uh, creativity in all kinds of music? Even the bad music sounded good in the 70s. So is yeah, that anything that uh, that you guys think that are same level as, as it was done in the 70s do you think that's can ever be done again no no it's because the trend you know it, the, judging by how the trends has been for the last you know it's it doesn't look that way yeah how do you see how, how do you feel when you see what's ch uh, topping the charts if you do you ever have a look of What, what is on the Spotify charts or something? Is it frustrating not to see so many rock bands or, or see the pop that's made today is not the, even the best, the best pop, right? So as a, as a musician, how, do you, how frustrated do you get? I mean, it's actually worse now than it's ever been. I yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, just if you look at pop, you know, pop in the 70s at least was still, you know, very creative and very like yeah, very diverse groups and the craftsmanship of songwriting was you know so much more elevated to nowadays you know now you know any idiot tool can can be you know a pop star and um i mean there's not so many um things that stick out when you get into a taxi anywhere in the world you always hear the same kind of vocal effects you know and it's um it sucks I don't think um, in general, also, you know, with rock music, I mean, if you listen to like most rock stations, at least here in Sweden and in Germany, they play really generic modern rock, you know, where the production is, um, it's so cringy and so horrible. And, and it just, it can never be better than it was, you know, when rock and metal was at its peak you know, in the 70s and maybe in the early 80s, you know, um, it's just how it is. Yeah, I had this I had this illusion when the pandemic started that uh, maybe we'll value more the artistic side and we go back to the roots and to see, you know, folk singers acoustically and people that uh, will value more the songwriting. But that didn't happen. The, the, 
did we have any lessons from the pandemic, from this crazy thing that we all experienced in, everywhere in the world as humans? Do you think that we, we learned something with that? Well, I one would hope so, right? That people maybe take less airplanes and people finally start, you know, um, separating their garbage, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know. But musically, changed. no. <laughs> but musically, well, yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like what, what you said about the songwriting, that um, the craft of writing good songs is, is um, um, it used to be more of a, of an honor thing, you know, um, back in the day that anybody, you know, was really good at their instruments and um, they put so much work into songwriting. Nowadays, you know, a lot of bands just live off having a good sound, but they don't necessarily have a good song because a good song you can always translate into an acoustic song. You know, you could take a, you know what I mean? If it's like a good, I don't know, um, I don't know, thrash metal song or whatever. If it's if it's that good, you know, and it has like certain hooks, you can turn it into any kind of genre. Um, but in thrash and death metal, then it has to be really good if in order for that to work. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, you get the idea. I was trying to um, yeah. fish for an extreme. But yeah. Um, yeah, not a lot of bands nowadays have such good songs, you know, where you have like a like a really good verse and, and really good lyrics and um, that leading into like a catchy pre-chorus and chorus and yeah, but I missed that. Suppose that technology didn't well, help much right? because any, as you said, anyone can record an album or even without a tune, anyone can become a singer. So you guys don't yeah. seem to be the, the most technological kind of artists. No, no. I don't know. I feel, I do we, we do record onto, onto a computer, but we, we don't really, I don't really know how to use it. We don't, it. we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't hide any, hide it, you know, because, you know, because um, we don't, I don't think we need to mask and mask. We can play with some slides when we record them. Absolutely, Absolutely. and you do it really, really, really well. I have to thank you so much, uh, Johanna and Nike, for the music and for the album. Lucifer 4 is out everywhere. I love it. I love, I love everything, every single thing about it. I love the videos, the visual aspect of, of the band. And, and it, it takes me to a, to a different time. Or, or to, you know, Johanna, for example, is like a song that there's a film going on in my head when I listen to the song. And so Louise, Louise is the song that I mean. Uh, one about myself no, i'm kidding <laughs> sorry sorry I, I i messed up with the name but uh because of your name but oh, louise is is a film that uh, it's a it's a film uh song it it really is like uh i don't know a horror film probably <laughs> yeah oh, that's kind cool of a, thank you so much that's super nice to hear my pleasure i hope you guys come and visit sorry and then next time you have to go to either of the shows. Where I will. Going. I will. I don't care if there's a pandemic, if it's a world war or whatever. I won't miss it, especially if it's Lucifer. Yeah. No, oh, <laughs> thank you. Johanna right. Sadonis, Nick Anderson. Thank you so much. It was great <laughs> chatting with you. A good talking to you. See have you a soon. great day. Stay in touch. Take care. Bye. <laughs>